In video one, I introduced integration and I said that integration was the opposite of differentiation. So our golden rule for integration is that we increase the power and then we divide by the new power. So the few things that we need to uh, know with integration. So we need to know how to write it, kind of like dy by dx equivalent. We need to know what it does. So we know that differentiation finds the gradient. So we need to know what integration does. And then we need to understand that there are two very different types of integration. So there's indefinite integrals and there's definite integrals. And we're going to discuss the difference. Now, the techniques aren't different, but definite's got kind of one more step on the end. So let's start with how we would write uh, differentiation. So let's say that, sorry, integration. So let's say that we've got a function. So perhaps, for example, y equals 3x squared plus 5x. So if we were to differentiate that, we would write dy by dx. So we need to be happy with how we're going to write that we're integrating. Now to do that, we use a really nice symbol. So we write that we're going to integrate y with respect to x. So this dx means that it's the x that I'm dealing with. So this dx kind of tells me that I'm doing this integration with respect to x. In other words, it's the x's that I'm going to be looking at the powers of. So it's the x's which I'm going to increase the power and divide by the new power. Any other letters which are involved here, I could just treat as constants. So if there was a t or a z, I could just pretend that they were any other number. I wouldn't have to worry about their powers. So again, I write this symbol. I write that I'm integrating 3x squared plus 5x. And you always have to write this dx. Sometimes you might be doing dt or dz. But in this case, my function was in terms of x. So I'm going to be integrating with respect to x. And then I know what I need to do. I need to increase the power and divide by the new power. I need to increase the power and divide by the new power. And then for those of you who watched the last video, you'll know that I have to have a plus c. That C represents any number which I might have, because when we differentiate a constant, it just disappears. So when I'm going backwards, when I'm integrating, I don't know what number I might have had on the end to start with. Right, so let's tidy this up. So 3 divided by 3 is just 1. 5 over 2, I think I'm just going to leave, actually, as 5 over 2. And I'm going to have a plus C on the end. This is what we call an indefinite integral. It's indefinite because I don't have any numbers on the top and bottom of this symbol here. If I had like a 3 and a 1, for example, it would be what we call a definite integral. So indefinite is where we don't have what we call limits. So we've got no limits. We're just kind of doing it in a generic sense. For example, when we differentiate, we've got a couple of options. We can either just differentiate or we can differentiate and then substitute values into our dy by dx to find the gradient at specific points. So that's really, really similar here. I can either find a generic term or I can substitute values in. So the question is, what are we actually doing? What is integration actually doing? So for that, I'm going to just draw a little picture uh, and I'm going to draw a random, uh, a random function. doesn't matter what it is. So I'm going to call this function y equals f of x. We don't know what it is, who knows, but let's just have a look at that. When I integrate f of x, it gives me the function which would work out the area under the curve. For example, that area there. So let's say that's a and that's b. So this is where definite integrals come into play. So integration as a whole, finds the area under a curve. So differentiation finds the gradient. Integration finds the area under a curve. So it's really, really, really useful. Um, you know, in a, in a mathematical sense of the word useful, we're not going to use it in Tesco. 
but it's useful in the sense that in math there's quite a lot of things that we can do once we know the area under a curve. So integration finds that area. So in this case, this is just giving us a general formula that we could substitute values into if we wanted to find the area. What definite integrals are going to do is allow us to find the area between two points, so for example here between A and B. So let's go back to this example here, although I think I'm going to end up with some fractions, so you can have a good laugh at my mental maths in a second. So let's have a look at some definite integrals now. So um, I'm still going to be using this 3x squared plus 5x. But let's say, let's just pretend that we know that this graph is nothing like that, because a squared we know would be more like a U shape. But let's pretend that this picture is representing uh, this function. Now let's pretend that I would like the area under this curve between the values of 3 and 1. So my A and B are going to be 3 and 1. What I then do, on my integral sign, I write 1 and 3. Now notice that we put the bigger number at the top. Okay, so my upper bound, my upper limit's at the top, my lower limit's at the bottom. And then I write the function in like I did last time, and of course we put our dx to tell people that it's the x's that I'm messing around with at the minute. So, uh, let's actually uh, integrate it. Now, because I'm dealing with a definite integral with numbers on, I'm going to put square brackets around this. So I increase the power, divide by the new power. Increase the power, divide by the new power. Now, for definite integrals, we don't have to put a plus c, and I'll explain why in just a second. So, we close our square brackets, and then we put a 3 and a 1 on the end of the square bracket. So, like in differentiation, when we've got a dy by dx, we can substitute values in. Now, I've got uh, a function, and I'm going to be substituting values in. So, we substitute in the top number first. So I'm going to do 3 times 3 cubed divided by 3. I probably should have simplified those 3s. Uh, and then I'm going to do 5 times 3 squared divided by 2. So that's what happens when I stick the first number in. And then you take away what you get when you stick the second number in. So that takeaway is really important. You put the, first, the top number in first, and then you take away whatever you get when you put the bottom number in. So that's going to be 1 cubed plus 5 times 1 squared over 2. I haven't bothered writing those 3s this time. So let's tidy this up. So I get 27 plus, oh, here we go, um, 45 over 2 uh, minus 1 plus 5 over 2. So a small bit of panicking later. Uh, I get 27 plus... 45 over 2 minus 1 minus 5 over 2. Ah, 46. Okay, so 46 would be the area under this graph between x equals 1 and x equals 3. Now the reason we don't need a plus c, imagine if you had a plus c in here, and you had a plus c in here, you'd end up with c take away c. So your c's would cancel. So in definite integrals, definite uh, integrals, you don't put a plus c. So that's really, really important. So hopefully that gives you an overview. I'm hoping that that's going to give you enough to look at the first part of chapter 13. So 13.1 talks about integrating, so the concept of increase the power, divide by the new power. Definite, uh, sorry, indefinite integrals is 13.2, so that again is talking about putting a plus c, uh, and then um, definite integrals comes into section 13.4. The idea that when you integrate you're actually finding an area is 13.5. Okay, so I'd like you at some point during this week and next week to have a look at integration and send me any problems that you have. Um, I hope you're all staying safe and I'll uh, be in touch soon. Bye.